One of the great uses for Dyad Flow is as a liner under a direct placed composites, and that's what we're going to do here. And in these restorations, you're going to see us do a couple of restorations here. And on this first one, it's going to be a class two direct composite, and I'm going to use the Dyad Flow as a liner underneath it. It's really become common practice today to use a flowable composite under a direct placed composite restoration, and that's what we're going to do here with the Dyad Flow. Except the benefits are that since it's a self-etching flowable composite, there is no separate etching step that's needed or no separate bonding agent step that's needed. The dyad flow bonds to dentin and cut enamel, so we don't have to go through any of those extra steps. In fact, once we finish the preparation, we're going to rinse it off as you see us doing here, and then we're going to go ahead and dry it for five seconds. And you're going to hit it with an air blast directly for five seconds and dry the dentin. Dyad flow bonds well to wet dentin. It'll bond to moist dentin, but the highest bond strengths that we see are actually to dry dentin. And so it's really nice to be able to tell a dentist, look, just dry it for five seconds like we used to do with enamel in the old days. While you, and it takes all the ambiguity out of what manufacturers mean by moist dentin or wet dentin. Just dry the dentin and put the diet flow into place. So we fill about a third of the preparation with the diet flow, as you see here. And then we use the enclosed brush to thin the material and to take it and move it up the cavity wall preparation towards the enamel margin. So we're going in and spreading this all around so it's thinning the material as we do this, but at the same time we're coating the entire inside of the preparation with the dyad flow. And this is really important. We want to cover all the tooth structure, whether it's dentin or cut enamel with the dyad flow. Get it down to a layer that's about half a millimeter thick, and then we're going to go ahead and light cure this for 20 seconds. And this happens to be a shade A2, and so a 20 second cure is more than enough to cure the dyad flow. And you can see we've got our first layer of the liner in place, and because of the size of the hole from the decay that was in there, I'm going to go ahead and place a second layer on top of that first layer. And you'll notice that we don't need to go in and agitate it with the brush because we've already got dyad flow covering all the tooth structure on the inside of the cavity preparation. So we just placed a little more dyad flow and then cured again for 20 seconds. At this point, we've got our dyad flow covering the entire tooth structure. It's been bonded into place, and now we just treat it like a typical direct composite, and we can place our composite on top of it. This happens to be Herculite Ultra, and I'm using a plastic instrument to put this into place and shape it. And you know, one of the frustrating things for me with uh, direct composites over the years has been post-operative sensitivity. And I always got the feeling it was from the step after we etch the tooth structure and rinse it before the bonding agent where we had to leave the dentin moist. I would get questions from dentists all the time saying, what does moist mean? Should I use a cotton pellet to dry it or just a little bit of air or just put a high volume suction next to it? I mean, how do you get the right degree of moist? And I had to be honest and say, you know, I've got no idea. I don't know what moist means to you. It might be different than what moist means to me. So dyad flow and the ability to dry the dentin, I don't think it can be overstated just how important that physical quality is. The composite has been cured at this point and we use a 7408 bird to do any shaping that we need to do and to clean up the margins and we're using the high luster points to go in and polish that. For the interproximal box we're going to use the OptiDisc to go in and finish that and the composite is finished. We're moving to the tooth behind it We've got a small class one occlusal restoration that we are doing and a little two surface OL restoration that's behind that. And if you pay attention to the steps that are involved when doing dyad flow, some of the more technique sensitive steps, especially the application of the bonding agent, is removed. And it takes a lot of the guesswork at a direct composites, which I love. Look at that, that's five seconds of air just being blown right onto those two preparations. I mean, that is counterintuitive if you've been doing composites for a while because we've been taught that dry dentin is not a good bond. And that's one of the really big steps forward with the dyad flow is the ability to have a nice high bond strength to dry dentin. So we place our first increment in and then we use the enclosed brush to again take that material. And again, we're not just thinning the material here. You really want to agitate it into the tooth structure, into the preparation for 15 to 20 seconds. You want to be sure you use this paintbrush too, the one that comes with the dyad flow, and not a 
tumbleweed brush or a micro brush or anything like that. That incorporates too much air into the composite. The paint brushes that are enclosed work perfectly for smearing the dye ant flow around the inside of the cavity preparation. Begin curing this for 20 seconds because of the shade A2. And as I look at these preparations now with that first layer of liner built into it, I realize they're shallow enough where I can just actually use the dyad flow as the entire restorative material. I would have reached perhaps for another flowable composite before or on lar larger composites, I like to use something that's stronger, like the Herculite Ultra that we used on the tooth in front of it. But for these smaller restorations, most dentists that I talk to do use a flowable composite. And now you can use the same composite that you used as a liner for your final restoration. So again, we place some more of the dyad flow into the preparation, and there's no need to agitate it at this point. Cure it for 20 seconds, and then we'll go in and do any finishing or polishing that needs to be done. Again, these are the high luster composite points being used on the small restorations. And one of the nice things about using the enclosed brush is that you can kind of shape the dyad flow with the brush so when you cure it you shouldn't have too much finishing to do afterwards and as you look at these restorations you can just see how well that A2 dyad flow disappears into the tooth and look at all the steps we eliminated going from the before to the after.